Hey, I'm Friendly Baron and welcome to episode 15 of my series Casual vs Speedrun in GTA 5. We switch the Franklin to begin our 56th mission, Lamar Down, and head to Franklin's house where the mission marker is. The speedrun upgraded Franklin's car during Architect's plan last episode, so the mirror they are driving around also has extra grip and power compared to the casual here. Throughout the speedrun, there's always a chance of random rain. While it will never cause a mission to outright fail, the lack of grip when driving around can be a bit annoying with the biggest worry being not accidentally coming to a stop in time and running into someone we shouldn't. Barring that fail, the rain otherwise only loses a handful of seconds when it happens. The speedrun takes a better route than the casual is given on the GPS to Franklin's house on the hills. This is actually the first time we've been to Franklin's new house that Lester got him, so as the speedrun arrives a short cutscene showing it off plays. This cutscene despawns the mission marker, but the speedrun is prepared for that and simply runs a short distance back into the street to be far enough away for it to return before heading inside and jumping over the banister. As the casual arrives, they too get the small cutscene, however it takes them a moment to realize the mission has despawned, and they begin to run back away before noticing it then respawns too. Now Franklin's car is always moved to the left of the house here, and the speedrun knows the head right to it. Leaving the house, the speedrun does a mid-drive speed boost combined with Franklin's power to rock it off, letting the shiny buffalo become the starship it wants to be with that chrome paint. I promise another episode of my GTA Weird Physics video explaining those mid-drives in a few weeks, don't worry. Now both players are headed up to the sawmill up north, where Franklin, Michael, and Trevor are meeting to save Lamar from Abala's drug deal gone bad. The route starts the same, but with the speedrun using Franklin's power to keep the car planted to the ground and then get further brake boost. Approaching this fork in the road, the speedrun will not choose the left or right option, but rather goes straight on for a direct route down the mountain, while the casual follows the road twisting down. It's much slower to be on dirt usually, but the linear path is short enough that it works for the speedrun, as well as being downhill so the lack of grip doesn't affect much. Once at the bottom, the speedrun gets back on the main road for a moment, where the casual catches up after spending about 30 seconds extra coming down. But then they split again as the speedrun jumps over the river as they will not be taking the suggested road and tunnel that the casual uses. We'll be back on the train tracks like the Polito score setup, trying to ride the rails as much as possible to keep the car off the dirt. That jump over the river has a specific spot we prefer to hit to get air in a clean landing zone, as well as a path up the small rise to the rails that minimizes bumps. We'll pause the speedrun there and show how the casual does this shootout first. As they drive to the far side of the mill, they are then told to give a starting point for Trevor and Franklin before going in. You are given three spots to choose from, and could even put them in the same spot, but the game has voice lines that persuade you to put them on opposite sides of the mill, which our casual decides to do. The casual confirms they are ready to go and heads in. They try to be stealthy with the first kill, but it alerts all of the enemies anyways. The casual clears out the first nearby wave, but before they are given time to think for themselves where they want to search for Lamar, they are prompted to switch to Trevor as he needs help, even though upon switching it's just two guys near him. You head in as Trevor and kill a few, then are again forced back to Franklin of kill more Balas and Lamar's location is revealed on the map. Now with Lamar and Trevor in tow, the casual fights back out to the entrance as Franklin and will hold them there and switch to the speedrun. As the speedrun arrives, they just go straight to the back of the sawmill and park up, and we'll be skipping the entire setup and two-person assault, instead just running right in as Franklin. We only need to kill the single enemy that is standing over Lamar right now, but we also kill this first guy on the left as he has a high chance of killing us if we don't. There's a convenient health pack located here, then we can jump down onto the sawdust pile to take no damage and skip all the enemies on the upper levels. We resync the two players as they take out a single guy on the ground, then two cars, and the speedrun does it efficiently with a grenade launcher, then blows themselves up right after. That sequence of enemies at the bottom unlocks the next checkpoint in the mission once killed, even though the speedrun skipped every other enemy up above. By dying here, we abuse said checkpoint as the game now assumes we have cleared the guys up above and doesn't respawn them, as well as teleports Lamar down close to us, as he'd otherwise still be near where we first rescued him, if you can call it a rescue the way the speedrun does it. The speedrun shot the window in that truck to get into it faster, then we drive back to his car and park in a way that Franklin can get in just as Lamar does as well, as he's a slow as heck NBC. Conveniently, the car is fully repaired here too, if it had been damaged on the drive over from Franklin's house. The casual has taken one of the cars from the final enemy grouping at the bottom, and heads back through the hills again, while the speedrun gets back onto the rails themselves, and avoids hitting the train. 
The train always spawns in this first section of the tunnel, as it appears in the edge of a player's loading zone when they respawn from the checkpoint death. So by the time the speedrun gets into Franklin's car and then over to the rails, it is in this spot and the speedrun doesn't have to worry about another one appearing later on the line. Approaching the bridge back by the main road, the speedrun drifts to the left then drives off to the right for a smooth jump off the raised rails, then gets a big brake boost off this hump in the road, which we used as a brake boost back in mission number 42. Some of the boost spots up north are kind of iconic since there aren't many locations to hit a boost up here, while in the city it's more about how many can you hit in a row. Even that little dip into the left dirt is enough for a boost once you have high speed. I'll mention now, the next episode will be the final episode of the main series, even though in the speedrun we only do option C, the third way, I'll be showing a comparison of every ending option anyways to satisfy your curiosity and then doing some episodes showing what strats have changed since I started doing this series, and then starting the GTA San Andreas casual first speedrun. If you want to know what game comes after I do San Andreas, you will need a time machine, as I don't know yet myself. The speedrun grabs some nice curb boost on the right of the road here, even though it looks flat, the changes in elevation between the pavement and the dirt is enough to give the car a noticeable boost. Then they cut left over the grass onto the highway that will dump us down to Lamar's house, along with giving us some massive brake boosts. The humps in the road that are adequate to boost off of are harder to see in the rain, but this is a highly known and routed brake boost section so I feel I could almost do this section blind, if it weren't for the random traffic. Anyways, even the square manhole covers can give a small brake boost, but this bump at the bottom is what really sets the speedrun off, so much speed that I got sideways in the rain and had to recover. This drive on the freeway is only 40 seconds long for the speedrun, but that's nearly 15 seconds faster than what the casual does it in all for just going in a straight line, which really shows how much this brake boosting saves. The speedrun carries the speed onto Lamar's street and to the marker, and that will end the mission, with the speedrun taking 7 minutes and the casual nearly exactly double that at just over 14 minutes. So thanks to the faster driving and boosting, the more direct routing to and from the mission up north, and skipping basically the entire shootout, saving half of the time over such a long mission is a big improvement for the speedrun. Continuing on our journey of missions with Down in the title, the speedrun begins meltdown by getting back into the car as Franklin. We want to have Franklin in his vehicle after this mission, and if we didn't get in it, then he'd end up be on the green motorcycle instead. We then switch the Michael and use his last C4 to explode. They have been careful to not use more than needed for the entire run. This sets the speedrun at the hospital near Michael's house which is right next to the start of the mission. Meanwhile, the casual will be driving all the way from Michael's location, as he's in that spot after coming back from Lamar Down. After grabbing a random car off the road, the speedrun will be making a call to Davey that the casual receives just about now. Because we exploded, we interrupt this phone call from happening naturally, but luckily it's one of the few phone calls the player can initiate ourselves, as we need to make the call and just hang up as soon as it connects to ensure a bug doesn't happen later in the game, where the game gets confused on who is delivering the gauntlets during the big score setup missions. The speedrun managed to nab a nice jester off the road, and it doesn't matter. The location is so close that it almost would have been faster to just run there. The speedrun was very unlucky with car spawns here during this recording. Jump into the clothing store, the skip force slowdown walking, navigate the menus quickly and the speedrun is ready to go. Pushing Jimmy here or opening the door for him isn't faster sadly, we've tried it. The casual follows along doing the same, just a bit slower. Once at the theater you must manually exit the limo which the speedrun does right away, and walks towards the corner. There is a wall here we can take cover on to skip the slowdown and get into the next cutscene a tiny bit quicker. This mission starts by being the opening of the movie that Michael has been helping, let's call it, produce earlier in the game. However, during the cutscene we are skipping, Devin Weston threatens Michael and says he's having Amanda and Tracy taken hostage, so Michael will be rushing back to his house to save them. The speedrun obviously takes the Vaca supercar over the limo, and the casual does as well. This drive is one of the most realistic in the game, I think. I've been on this road in real life at night, and it's just as hard to see with lots of annoying traffic to deal with. The speedrun tends to stay in the center of the road, as going on the sidewalk here could cause lots of pedestrian hits and give us cops which takes a long time to lose. As seen, this vodka is wide and trying to squeeze a small gap you're used to earlier in the run doesn't usually go well. Approaching Michael's house, the speedrun is careful to brake before the airtime leading to this intersection, then park on the left side of the driveway. Since Jimmy is blocking the other door, we teleport out right away and can run inside. I like to assert my dominance by shooting the first guy in the nuts while saving Amanda, 
then running up the stairs in first person to be ready for the guy holding Tracy to spawn. We could do this one without the power, but it's worth the half second time loss to assure it works. The rest of the spawns in this shootout are scripted, so the speedrun knows where to look and the timings for when each guy will spawn. After the grenade goes off, two in the doorway, one in the living room, two in the kitchen, then as you head outside, accidentally press your power button, then take out two more in the dining room. These shots aren't the hardest to hit since the guys are mostly in the same spot each time, but doing it quickly without stopping is very satisfying. Once all Meriwether guys on foot are dead, we'll use grenades that take out the two jeeps before the enemies spread out and we have to get them one by one. First person up the stairs for speed and the speedrun is done. The casual doesn't really struggle here, just taking out the enemies as they get close to him, instead of being the one who gets close to the enemies first. He'll have to take cover and slowly work through the jeep spawns, as they move much more randomly than the guys that were inside the house. That'll finish up everything in Meltdown, with the speedrun being 2 minutes faster than the casual in about 3.5 minutes of gameplay, thanks to driving to get into the tuxedo faster, getting into the vodka quicker, then doing the shootout in Michael's house as fast as possible. We are loaded into the Del Perro Pier as Michael, and the speedrun will just switch the Trevor right away as we know he's going to be at the strip club already, while the casual is going to drive to this mission as Michael and sees a supercar to take. The speedrun chooses the subtle setup for the big score, and we'll be comparing the speedrun doing the obvious setup at the end of the video. There's only two setup missions to do, the Stingers, which are the spike strips we need to steal, and the Gauntlets, which need modified and delivered. We'll be putting the setup time now and the stingers together, then the gauntlets separately. When the speedrun switches here, they will either be outside or inside the strip club. Usually with the current time it takes, we seem to always be inside here, though being outside would be faster as we can shoot while running in the carry speed as seen back on Survey and the Score, mission number 45. The speedrun selects the default crew members as we don't need anything special, nor need the extra money from the lower cuts. The speedrun will switch the Franklin after the selection, but only after they put Michael out on the dance floor. With the way the text arrive, it's common for the casual to do stingers first before the gauntlets, so we're going to cut the timer and footage of the casual to have the gauntlets now, and come back to stingers later while keeping the speedrun footage as normal. The casual is checking their in-game email for the locations of some pre-spawn gauntlets around the map. However, the speedrun is going to head to the garage nearby and just buy gauntlets off the website. The game doesn't care about who owns the gauntlets, just that you have them, so buying some works just fine. We must first buy the garage's Franklin as well, otherwise there is no place to store them. Something I haven't talked about much is duping or glitching cars, or doing things like wall breaches that get you below the map. There are quite a few things like these known in the game, however we just haven't seen any use for them at any point in the speedrun. The time it takes to pull any of them off never ends up being worth it. Until now at least. We'll only be buying two gauntlets, and can just pick any color and press back to buy two in a row, then head into the garage to grab one. The casual has finally located their first gauntlet on the map and heads to it. The speedrun does another mid-drive combined with Franklin power to boost the gauntlet away. They react very well to that kind of boost. The bug I mentioned earlier regarding the phone call to Davy is no longer a huge worry in the game. As long as that call is made, it won't softlock kind of like that one we saw back in the wrap-up, but in this mission it would be the game not being sure who was delivering the gauntlet, and you'd have to switch the Michael every time we delivered one as Franklin for it to be counted, losing around a minute and a half. This jump off the highway overpass is something only I really do. It saves about a second over the safer line to the right that most runners take, but it looks flashy and I have a pretty good track record of not screwing myself over, so I keep doing it for now. Both players are still pretty close for modifying this first gauntlet, however the casual is getting the closest gauntlet and the speedrun had to slow down to buy the garage. The speedrun has to wait a moment for the text telling them about the gauntlets at all to spawn in, just as we actually need it. The speedrun cycles the weapon wheel to skip the cutscene of the car driving into the shop, and has purchased the mods and is headed out before the casual is even done watching said cutscene. No extra mods besides the default package is needed for the speedrun. They cut across the grass to the left here, but don't cut across the large parking lot under the highway. By staying on the road, it means a car will spawn just in front of the garage when we get to it, and the speedrun can hit them head on to kill the driver so it can use that car after delivering the gauntlet. Unluckily, this time around the car had a passenger, which for some reason means they are invulnerable to death from a head on, so the speedrun has to steal a car, which tends to take longer as cars stop spawning for a while once you arrive at the location. 
The speedrun will take a direct route over the grass back to the garage, then grab the next gauntlet and again jump it towards the Los Santos Customs. The speedrun could actually get the mods for the car before getting the text if needed. Funnily, the game implies you need to upgrade the car's suspension, but only three mods are needed for the heist gauntlets, race brakes, the best engine upgrade, and the rock crawler off-road tires. The casuals headed to their second gauntlet too, on top of the car park. You could in theory grab a random gauntlet off the street, but they are a rare spawn. I've only seen them twice here in probably nearing 100 runs. Approaching the delivery garage again, the speedrun is this time successful in smashing into a car to kill its driver, which leaves the vehicle nearby for the taking. They park the gauntlet near the right door to open it up, but then get out and acquire the donated vehicle. The first gauntlet we delivered is inside. We'll use this white car to push it into the corner of Franklin's power. Usually there is a block from letting you open the doors once it's been delivered. However, this check for has been delivered does not take place when the pathing mechanic that warps you into a vehicle that has both doors blocked takes place. So we are able to warp into the first gauntlet after some pushing, then get back out and the game thinks we put a gauntlet inside, and is telling us to leave the lockup. We use the white car to again push the technically second gauntlet out of the way so the door can close again, and that completes the delivery of the second gauntlet. That leaves us with a perfectly good gauntlet sitting right here. The speedrun can get back into the gauntlet after the mission pass screen comes up, then be sitting there ready for the garage to open again. Meanwhile, the casual is being fast forwarded and has to go get a third gauntlet. As the garage door opens, there are now two gauntlets inside as we have successfully dupe delivered one, and we can slide our now third gauntlet in between them to warp out for just a little extra time save. This saves around a minute to a minute and a half during the run, depending on the kind of cars you get with the new or old strat. So overall, the speedrun saves 6 minutes over going to the pre-spawn gauntlet locations and just buying the gauntlets themselves, along with that awesome dupe of one of the gauntlets to save a ton of time, making for another mission with a 50% time save. We now return to the original setup and stinger timers. The speedrun is driving straight to the police lot using that car we were pushing the gauntlets with. The casuals back in the strip club as that's where all the setups begin, and they receive the stingers text first each time so they go there first with Michael after slowly walking out of the strip club with him. The speedrun will get right to the point and drive around the back side of the lot, smacking into one of the decorative cubes to come to a stop, then just hop the fence and take the van away. We used to drive into the lot and then just run in, but hopping the wall is so much easier. The casual sees the gate simply open and drives in. He is so close to success. He is about to take the van, but then sees the guard and tries to stealthily take him out. Sadly, he alerts the police even if you use a silencer and the casual has to deal with losing the cops, while the speedrun just freely drives back to the strip club for delivery. The casual eventually returns with the van and no cops as well, and that basically finishes up the stingers and setup section. After the casual delivered the van, they went to get this truck and got hit. As they recovered from the terrible accident and tried yet again to acquire the vehicle, they were smacked down once again by the evil NPC. And if that was not enough, another car eventually joined for a third smackdown on our poor casual. Then he finally got his revenge by taking the Warner, and that's where we had originally cut for the gauntlet section. It's a little confusing because it's not in order, but trust me that the casual was 4.5 minutes slower during the stingers and initial setup due to having the drive to the mission instead of switching with Trevor, and being a buffoon getting the cops while stealing from the cops. If you think the 3 time hit was unfair to include in the time, you can mentally subtract 40 seconds yourself, but I'm leaving it in. It's all been leading up to the big score this episode, and now both players are ready to start the mission. The speedrun is already close to the strip club where it begins. They run over to the white X on the ground, which is a convenient marker for how far away we must be for the mission to spawn. The casual finished all the setups down by the garage, so they have to drive over first. This option of the heist starts slow then ramps up later. We start by stealing the bank trucks, walking through the vault, then play hacker with traffic lights before finally getting into a shootout with Merriweather and then escaping in the modified gauntlets. The speedrun pulls a J-turn then takes a slightly faster route to the waiting location. If you like the video by the way, I have lots of similar videos you can check out in the description, and if you watch from recommended anyways, I recommend you subscribe because it helps me out quite a bit. If you already are subscribed, then please take that time to instead do some push-ups, gosh darn it, you need to exercise a bit every week at least. Anyways, the speedrun drops the Stinger Spike Strip right away, then drives ahead to our special not actually important Heidi parking space. Once the tires pop, the casual gets out to help his NPCs, 
The speedrun is lazy and just sits in the truck as the game doesn't make you actually leave it here, and it just slowly floats forward during this time. The speedrun will then drive straight into the garage down below at full speed, and the guard will wave us in while sparks from the massive crash he doesn't notice spray over him. Once inside, the speedrun just walks in first person here as it's slightly faster than third person, which is different from every other interior zone in the game. All of this stuff inside is otherwise the same while retrieving the gold, so we'll skip over it so I don't have to keep coming up with filler like asking you to subscribe to my Patreon or something. Skipping ahead one minute in-game time, we are getting back into the vans. The speedrun can be lazy and just sit in the garage instead of following Trevor's truck out. The distance in which you get too far from him is not met since he takes right turns around the building. The Italian job inspired traffic light minigame is up next. This is similar to the 1969 and 2003 movies in that, wait wrong video series. Anyways, this minigame is easy. The speedrun has one trick that they can toggle a light twice to reset its timer before switching, but even the casual has no problem here directing the crew to the underpass. Everything in this mission till now pretty much serves as a mental break for the speedrun as not much is going on, but now that the shootout is beginning it picks right back up. The speedrun's first main goal is to kill each jeep as it arrives before the enemies inside them have a chance to spread out. Similar to the wrap up, we need to kill a minimum number of enemies from certain groups in order to progress, and ignore other enemies that just respawn when killed instead of counting towards progress. The speedrun uses the grenade launcher on Trevor, and we should have to use 6 or 7 shots, which will leave us with at least 2 for the next mission where we also want to make use of his launcher. After clearing the front and killing the first two jeeps, a third arrives to the left, then we can grab at least one of the guys behind us that we'll need to clear out later. One more jeep and some foot soldiers in the front, then I like to use Trevor's power for extra damage to get the two snipers on the overpass. If you don't kill them first try, they fall down and can't be hit until they get back up, which is rather frustrating to have happen. The speedrun can then go clear out the final two or three guys on the flank, hopefully taking the time to get headshots and not missing the last guy and having to reload. That'd be super embarrassing. The speedrun is done with the shootout now, and the casual is still going on their first attempt. I say first because they are going to die soon, I'm letting you know it's going to happen. It's a tough shootout and Franklin gets mobbed after you switch to him easily and can be killed. The casual is forced to switch to and from the different characters, but the speedrun avoids this by killing the enemies that supposedly pressure the other teammates quickly. So the casual dies and has to attempt the shootout again. It takes them another minute and a half to finish the shootout, so we'll skip ahead to that point when both players are ready to drive away. The player is Franklin here, and the rubber banding is back in action strongly, where the other gauntlets will speed up or slow down to be as close as possible to the player. The speedrun will take an early left to cut ahead of the pack of cars, then make use of the rubber banding by getting smacked in the back by Michael's gauntlet. We use the power to steady the hit so it has less of a chance of spinning us out, nearly immediately putting us near max speed. The speedrun goes straight instead of left to again take a shorter route, instead of winding through the city and construction zone. We can't go any farther than we do though, or we'd outdistance the rest of the crew. During this drive, the speedrun cannot press the look backwards button. By being ahead like this, the game doesn't get a chance to spawn all the cops it wants to, so if you look backwards it will immediately spawn some cops directly in front of you that we'll be crashed into. The cops blocking the lower road don't spawn in for the speedrun, so they can skip the jump and slow down from the explosion, but they have to be careful on this straight to not go too fast or they will outpace the other cars. The speedrun is ahead of the gauntlets going onto the freeway, which also causes the helicopter on the upper left to rubber band forward and crash itself into the bridge. If the chopper wasn't crashed, it has a chance to shoot out our tires, which can cause potential problems as you'll see on the casual screen soon. The speedrun pulls to the right to avoid the rest of the team catching up, then drives into the truck themselves. Watch the casual now, as they approach the forced slowdown behind the trucks, the game flings them into the air because they have at least one tire shot out. It's a weird glitch and can possibly throw you into the other side of the freeway, failing the mission when you miss the trucks. That's the conclusion of the heist itself. To finish the mission, we drive an SUV with the main characters back, and the speedrun takes a few slightly better lines including heading straight out of the shipping area to the road. The speedrun makes heavy use of Franklin's power driving this heavy car back to whip it around corners without losing speed. We then use the same slight shortcut up the hill that was used on Friends Reunited back in episode 4, but stay left at the top on the road. Coming up at the crest, the speedrun gets a brake boost in this thing which gives us more speed than we need down the hill, and finally taking a line to the right through the hills then jumping the park into Michael's house. 
This mission was pretty similar for both players at the start and the finish, but lots of small time saves during the beginning and the end, then the major time saves with the better shootout and gauntlet escape, leads to the speedrun saving almost exactly 6 minutes over the casual, a sizable chunk of time for such a long mission. Usually the longer the mission, the closer the time between the two. The speedrun chooses the subtle heist option in the runs, and I'll explain why by doing a comparison of a theoretical speedrun doing the obvious heist option. The obvious heist has three setup missions, and we'll be doing the cutter setup first, where we need to retrieve the machine from a lot in the industrial part of the city. The obvious run has a few splices and cuts in it as it's not a fully routed option, and I made some mistakes or had better ideas later to cut into it. The obvious heist has to wait for text messages after switching the Franklin before we can head in. Once it's spawned in, the obvious player uses the ramps on the side to get on top of the buildings, and is able to see all the guards and construction workers. They are taken out in this order as to not alert the police, and we can drive the cutter onto the truck straight to where it needs to go, while the subtle heist option is delivering its gauntlets with that eventual dupe. It would be faster to do the train mission first before the cutter, but from all my testing the text for the train doesn't spawn in until after the cutter, or it has such a wide despawn area that it's not worth doing first at all. After killing everyone that can be seen from the top, the obvious gets two more in the front, then two more in a collateral and can take the truck. I tried a couple ways of just taking the truck and getting the cops, such as hopping into a nearby tunnel or using the mechanic that the first time you go into a barbershop or tattoo shop in the game you will lose the cops instantly, but the truck was too slow to get away from the cops to have the stars flashing for that to work. We'll skip ahead to when the cutter is actually delivered. The obvious speedrun took a slightly better route through the city to get here over what the GPS would say to do. The subtle run is about to start duping the second gauntlet, and the obvious run is looking for a car that's set as their getaway car, for the second setup mission. The game does recommend heavily that you upgrade the car, as they end up bogging it down during the actual heist due to having more people in it. However, we're just going to hop in a tunnel so no need for it to be fast. The obvious now needs to do the train setup mission up north, which is a long drive. Partially on the way there, I remember that switching to another character and back between these setup missions tends to put Franklin in his own car, which it does when I switch to Michael, so doing that a moment earlier could save… 5 seconds? The difference between these two heists ends up being nearly 5 minutes with my routing, so not a big deal. The obvious wants to drive up with Franklin to utilize his brake boosting, even though the freeway is mostly flat after we get out of the city anyways. The subtle setup is playing at normal speed while the obvious is being fast forwarded for the rest of the setup missions. For the train mission, Franklin throws a switch sending the train down a siding, then Trevor immediately flies a helicopter that somehow can pick up these things on its own, then drops them on a flatbed. This mission was probably the most immersion breaking for me in my original playthrough. There's no magnet nor helicopter in the world that could pick up a train, let alone both combined. I am being generous with the obvious selection in this comparison as well. I got quite a few bad switches and had to make extra long waits for text that I cut out. I'm not sure if it's because of my save file or how it would actually go, but I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt. For example, the softlog talked about earlier what the gauntlets happened to me during the train mission, where the game got confused on who I was delivering the trains with. We know how to prevent this with Michael and Franklin, but don't know what phone call is required on Trevor, or if there is one at all. The game really can get mad at you for playing fast sometimes. Now we fly back to the strip club with Trevor to start the mission, just as the subtle finishes up their setups too. The subtle takes 5 minutes less to do his two setup missions, and that's the main change. The actual heists themselves are nearly the same time, I got it to within 11 seconds difference of each other between the obvious and subtle from this point on. There's nothing too special going on in the obvious heist itself, just good play and shooting all the enemies as fast as possible. So the subtle heist takes 19 and a half minutes total, and the obvious option takes 25, and that's the reason we don't do it in the speedrun. Hey, so this is my first video coming out after I hit 100,000, well, 100,000 subscribers, and I honestly can't even fathom how many that is. I had 500 subs on YouTube six months ago, and this growth has been insane. Th thank you for watching what I'm doing, because I honestly have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm really happy it's working, and I look forward to continuing to make GTA 5 videos and branching out in the Casualverse speedrun with uh, other games. Thank, thank you so much.